Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 41. It's on multi-step reactions. Imagine I'm going to build a toy out of the parts that are sitting right here. So maybe I take a base and then I carefully attach a wheel to it. Can you figure out what I'm making? Add a few more wheels, a few more parts, maybe a window, and pretty soon I have a toy train. But I didn't just build that in one step, I had to build it step after step after step. And so chemical reactions occur along the same path. We have the reactants, we have the products, but it doesn't just magically appear. We have to go through step after step and we have all these intermediates along the way. And so when you're looking at an overall reaction, remember it's not the whole story. The whole story is each of those elementary steps added together. Now each of those elementary steps are based on the collisions between particles and so that collision theory is going to tell us a lot about the speed of which that reaction is occurring. And so adding all those up we get what's called the reaction mechanism or the overall steps of the reaction and this can only be postulated. In other words when you're looking at an overall reaction we can make predictions about the stoichiometry. In other words how much mass or atoms or moles we're going to have at the beginning and at the end but if we're looking at the reaction mechanism, we can't do that. In other words, we can't predict what's going to happen. We can only measure it. And so the rate law can be measured experimentally, but each of those steps have to be figured out, and that's what chemistry does. So if we're to look at this overall reaction right here, I could make immediate predictions about the stoichiometry of this reaction. In other words, I know I have one mole of this on the left, I should get one mole of this on the right. I could figure out the mass on the left and the mass on the right, but when I look at that overall reaction, I know nothing about the rate law. It can be measured, but I can't make predictions about it. And the reason why is this is based on a reaction mechanism. In other words, this is not just one step. This is two steps, or scientists think that this is two steps. We have this first elementary step and then the second elementary step. And you can see there are things showing up here that don't even occur in that overall reaction. And so if we're looking at the reaction mechanism, it can only be postulated. Chemists can put forward an idea of what they think is going on, but we actually can't make predictions. However, if we break it down into its elementary reactions and we know that's what's going on, then we can make predictions about it. And so if we know this is the first elementary step, then we can take a look at that and we can figure out things like the rate law. If we know this is that first elementary step, we know that these two things are, are colliding together. We know that this is a bimolecular reaction. We could even model what's going on here. And so we could make predictions about the rate law. The rate law is simply going to be K or the rate constant. And this is going to be a second order reaction because this is the uh, concentration of each of these two reactants. And so let me give you an example of this. This is one of my favorite chemists. This is Melvin Calvin. He got a Nobel Prize for this work. And what he was trying to do is unlock what leaves do. In other words, leaves are able to take in carbon dioxide and make sugar. But it's not just one step, it's a series of steps that are going on. And until he figured it out, it was really a black box. We didn't know what was going on. And so what he did is he would step the re stop the reactions at different points, he would figure out the intermediates of that, and then he came up with what we call now the Calvin cycle, named in his honor. And so remember, reactions don't occur just in one step. There's a series of elementary steps within that. We can make predictions about that, but once we get to the level of the elementary reaction, we can figure out what's going on, and I hope that was helpful.